All right, guys, out here on the line, just want to share something with you. Um, we came in here the other day in the snow, and there were coyote tracks in this road. And I don't know if you can see it on the video, but down in the bottom where this road drops down in there, there's a place that the water has created a trough over the mountain. And that goes from here. There's another um, timber road below us. But we noticed in the snow the other day that the coyotes were using that water trough to get from this road to that road and vice versa so we came in and made a scent post set on the other side of the inside of that curve picked up a dog this morning well, we also noticed in the snow a few days later that when they were coming out they were obviously coming this way too well we hadn't put a set in here yet we remade that set um, so we're going to put this set in and hopefully pick up more dogs and we just wanted to film it and show you what it looks like all right guys so on this set we're making a uh, scent well, I'm going to use the word post, but let me talk about that for just a second. Especially new guys. We, um, folks here scent post and they want to put like an actual stick in the ground, which will work. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. The problem is, even the best trappers, when you put that stick in the ground, you, you really have no way to guarantee where that coyote's going to pee. I mean, if you've ever watched like your domestic dog pee, they can't aim for crap. I mean, they may stand 36 inches away from the fire hydrant or the stick or whatever it is they're peeing on, and it just it's just everywhere. So in order for a trapper to try to say that he's going to put a coyote's paw on the pan by putting a stick in the ground, you're just making things too difficult. And to be honest, I think, and this is my opinion, it's a very low percentage set. We call this a scent post or a scent marking set. And simply what we've done is I've transplanted this big tuft of grass and it sticks out like a sore thumb in this shell bed and this black coal from this haul road and we absolutely just hammered the coyotes on it and we wanted to, to share it with you to see if it might help you so first thing you're going to do is, is find some type of grass that you're going to transplant I don't like to use little tufts you can use little tufts but we have a little more success on something tall that's going to make them want to filter in here and we're going to show you what we mean by that so it may take us a few minutes but just bear with us and I think it'll be worth your time Again, we're setting it up on a drag. Uh, this road gets traveled pretty heavy, and this will give the opportunity, the coyote the opportunity to get over the hill. So when we make these, I like to keep them no more than 15 inches apart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bed a trap here, and then I'm gonna put this one here on this side and force that coyote to come through it and we'll show you what we mean by it but I, again 12 to 15 inches I mean you don't want this thing so far out here that you give that coyote all this room to come in there if he wants to pee on this I want him to have to come in here to sniff around and then to cock his leg because once he walks through here if he just does it one time I've got four chances well unless he's a three-legged coyote I got four chances to pick him up in this trap so here we go. Nice shell. There is no pretty trap bed in this stuff. So just bear with me while I deal with it. One thing you want to do when you're digging these trap beds is do the best you can not to let all the ground around it swell up on you. you create something that looks unnatural. So for some of you new guys, you're better off digging your bed smaller than what you need it and forcing that trap in there than to dig that big giant hole and then start trying to fill stuff in around it because that's when you're going to end up with the heebie-jeebie shakes on your trap and that's not going to be a good thing. You can also take your hammer and kind of tighten down that hole by tapping it out a little bit. 
Again, I always punch a hole in mine for drainage. Imagine that. All right, that's all I'm gonna do to it. If you'll look, I don't know if you can zoom in on this. For some of you new guys, well, hold on. Let me do this first. I'm freezing there. We got put of snow coming starting tomorrow evening again so all right for you new guys put that trap in that bed and just give it a little turn just give it just a little just a little bit of a turn to kind of dig those levers just a bit you don't want them way back under there because you don't want that trap slow just give them a little turn right there, and that absolutely will will uh, lock that trap up for you. Salt really heavy, and this trap bed is much bigger than what I would normally dig. But when the shell comes out, you got to take what you get. So take just a little bit of stuff fill those holes up so you don't have to put so much peat in there or wax dirt or whatever you're using and that trap is rock solid now what I always do is if I have to add anything I just salt it pretty heavy so it don't freeze in there too Again, the coach, I mean, people will say coats are not, I mean, I wouldn't leave that chain laying on the ground. But I would just tap it down enough to be able to throw some stuff on it and be done with it. I keep saying it over and over and over. If the stuff that you're using, the coach more interested in the chain than he is the stuff you're using, Get rid of it. Again, I dropped some peat down inside those jaws to insulate those jaws good. Work it in with your fingers. Don't be worried about that trap firing. Do the best you can to make everything around that trap bed look symmetrical. That's all I'm gonna do to it. The only thing I got there that's relatively soft is that pan. Again, he's gonna, you want him walk through this, so you wanna make sure this looks all uniform as much as you can. take some wax dirt 
with my buddy John Wilkinson out there in PA. We don't really get enough bad weather here to completely bed in wax dirt. I just like to put enough on the top to help the peat shed the moisture. Okay, now, real important, I see some guys making sets and they'll either leave this like this or they'll try to um, sift some stuff in there. It's very hard if all you're gonna do is work with this area to make it look uniform. So when I put a set in like this, I'll either take my hands, my broom, you see how the, di I don't know if you can tell in the video, this area looks different than this. So then I just take my hand And for lack of a better term, rough all that up. So now this whole big area is starting to look the same. Then you're going to take your next grass clump. And again, that's probably no more than 15 inches. And what I'll do is take my hammer. You don't dig that hole a little bit. Big winds come or that coyote starts to walk through there. He's probably going to move it or knock it over, especially once you lure it up. All right. Now, you don't have to do this, but it's, it's up my catch rate tremendously. I see guys sometimes they'll put like a, this like scent post walkthrough type thing in, but they'll have this turn the other way. This would be here, this would be here. Well, what you want to do is make this to where when that coyote is coming this way or that way, it's natural for him just to veer over once he picks this up and come right through it. I'm not saying that he wouldn't walk straight through it if you had it turned the other way. But if his natural path, travel path is right by this, he may very well, as he comes through here, pick that up and walk right through there and pop him. Uh, a couple other things. Small guiding. I know my trap's here. Put that down in the ground like it lives there. And then we're going to sift it in a minute. Now, with this freeze thaw, thaw weather, you got to be real careful with what you put on top of that. It's got to be extremely, extremely light. So I go really high. Need a little bit more. Again, you want it really light because it will freeze up on you if you get it heavy. Now, 
that's all I'm gonna put on it. But what I'll do is I'll go back over here where we where I roughed all that up, I'll sift it too. So now you've got a big uniform area. I don't know if she can zoom out. It all looks the same. All right, couple things about your, your lure. It's breeding season, what's well, the beginning of breeding season? It's the beginning of breeding season, gland lure, and urine shines. I mean, we still making dirt holes and still catching dogs on, on dirt holes, but you're really gonna see sets like this shine during breeding season. So what I'll do is I'll take some coyote gland, and a decent amount, it's really cold, you don't want a pile of it, you don't want to roll on this set. And I'll put it right back here in the front of this tuft. Then I'll take some red fox gland and put it right back there with it. And then I'll take just a hair, just a little old pea size amount and put it here. Cause I want his attention on the back of this. And one thing you don't want to do, don't, don't lure out here on the front. If that dog wants to check this out, make him have to get his nose over in there. Make him want to pee in there on that tuft and not hang on the front of it. So then, I would take urine and really hammer that one. And just a little tiny drop right here on the front of this one. Don't put anything out here on the front. Now the one last thing we've been doing is I'll take this rock. Prevailing wind where I'm at is difficult. It's very difficult in West Virginia in these mountains to get a prevailing wind. I mean, that wind sits in here in circles. So you can't hardly play the wind. A lot of times them dogs, as good as they smell, they'll go right by that and not pick that up. So what we do is I'll take something really skunky or straight up skunk, squick, uh, skunk quill, and I'll use a healthy amount of it. That's a lot of skunk. And I'll just smear the dickens out of this rock. And then I'll put a little underneath it in case we get some beat down weather. Now you ask why you do that. I want this dog, if he don't pick up that set, to pick this up, I want him hanging around here as long as possible. More often than not, when I come back to check this, if I've got a catch here, there'll be hair all over this rock because he'll roll all over it and lay in it and I don't care. It keeps that dog at this set and the longer he stays here, if he's working this thing, eventually he's probably gonna pick that up. Not every time, but I would rather him roll all over this rock and stay here even if he doesn't pick it up. I want that dog hanging out here rather than him this time of the year. Sometimes people get discouraged because they just walk right on by your set. But anyway, it works for us. I'm not saying it'll work for you. I'm not saying it's uh, guaranteed to put fur in your truck, but I would give it a shot and I bet you it'll help you. Um, if you need us holler at us, we'd love to help you. I'll catch you somewhere else down the line.